over 50 years in the music business now. What's your secret for, for being around for so long? Determination, I suppose. Yeah? Yeah. Hard work and determination. And still doing it. Huh? And still doing it today. Oh, yeah. I believe your, your father was a musician. He was, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what you learned from him? Well, uh, I watched him play, and he played fiddle, and accordion, and mandolin, and banjo, and he sung French, uh, bluegrass, and country, and that was my first music. So you would say your house was um, very much a musical household? Beg pardon? It was very much a musical household in your home when you were growing up? Yeah, yeah, I started at five years old trying to play a guitar. Now, you're known as a multi-instrumentalist, you play a lot of instruments, but what was your first instrument of choice when you were growing up? A guitar. Yeah? And the second, at five years old, and a fiddle at ten. Then all the other instruments I learned afterwards, I was a drummer, and uh, all that sort of stuff. Were there um, any guitar players that, that took your attention in those early days? Well, no, not really. When I first heard in the guitar player scene, one was T-Bone Walker. When I got up grown, I saw T-Bone Walker for the first time in San Antonio. I, I had never seen no guitar players. I've heard a bunch of them that was out of Mississippi, but I didn't like the kind of music they were playing, so I, I really didn't care for it. Now, speaking of T-Bone Walker, there's a, a legendary story that one of your uh, very first gigs as a guitar player was at a club in Houston. When yeah, you... yeah, T-Bone, yeah. That was 1947. Can you tell us a bit about that night? Well, all I did, uh, this man T-Bone Walker got sick and got off of the bandstand, and I picked up his guitar and started a booger-wooger with his band called <laughs> Gate Mouth Boogie. And uh, I went from there, and that was my debut to the music world, to the professional music world. Where, where did your uh, Gate Mouth nickname come from? Huh? The nickname Gate Mouth, where, where did that come from? Oh, well, I don't, um, I'm writing a book, and it's going to come out in the book. I, I just don't quote it right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in later years, you, you started playing with uh, being backed by big band or big orchestras even. even That must have been an exciting uh, start to your performing life. What do you say about a big band? Used to um, well, go on the road with a, with a big orchestra behind you? Yeah, that was Maxwell Davis Orchestra. My first, my first recording was with Maxwell Davis Orchestra. This must have been an exciting in way to... In to... in California. Must have been an exciting way to start your recording career. Yeah, that started my recording career. Now, during the, the late 40s and 50s, you were, you were tied to a management contract, which was, um, I believe, quite hard for you to get out of. Do what now? You were tied to a, a, manage, a management contract with uh, Don Roby? Yes, I stayed with him uh, 17 years. And it wasn't uh, always a, a, a happy relationship, was it? Oh, it was all right. He was a good businessman. Yeah. And I have to I have to give him credit for for uh, keeping me in the business. And when I left him, I just kept going. I never stopped. You certainly did. Many styles of music you've covered over the years. Country music is one that uh, came in. Yeah, into well, that's what I started out with. So I went back and started playing, start playing it again. See, because that was my music in the first place. That's the kind of music I played from the beginning. In fact, because that's what my dad played. So you... I went back to it and um, started playing it, and uh, it worked very well for me. Sure did. I believe you toured as a musical ambassador for, for the State Department in, in the 70s. Yes, I did. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, they sent me to Northeast Africa. Uh, they sent me to Russia in 79, um, Japan in 78. I mean, just... I mean, 80-something. Anyway, uh, this sent me all over the world in a lot of places, a lot of times. And how was the audience reaction to places like Russia who wouldn't um, have experienced a lot of music like yours? They enjoyed my music, all I can say. Yeah. Yes, they did. 
Is it particularly important to you not to get stuck in one one particular style of music? Because you have moved around a lot over the years with with your with well, your styles. Well, that's just the way I do it. Other people get stuck in, you know, one kind of music. But but I can't do it, man. I gotta I got to uh, do other kind of music. So that therefore it's hard for I hate for people to try to pigeonhole me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You've been on quite a few record labels over the years too. How how have you got on with record company people in general? Do what now? Record companies. How have have you got on with them over the years? Been good well, relationships. I got along with them all fine. Yeah. Yeah, I get along with all the record companies fine. It's just that if I feel like they can't do the job, then I change. I mean. Yeah. Enjoyed a particularly strong following in Europe. Any, any reason in particular why, why the Europeans think are taken to your music? Oh yeah, they, they love it very much. Yeah. I'll talk about your last album, uh, Back to Bogalusa. It was a return to Cajun sounds. Did you feel it was time to, to get back to those musical roots? Did I do what now? With your last album, it was a return to, to uh, Cajun, your Cajun influences? Did you really... Oh, uh, I decided to do uh, uh, a Louisiana oriented type um, album, and I did, and it went well. Certainly did. Of course, my my home state, Texas, got mad because they said I did all Louisiana and all Texas. <laughs> <laughs> did they really? Yeah. <laughs> For that album, you um, you recorded down at the uh, studio in the country at Bogalusa. That's right. That, that's a studio you've recorded at many times in, in the past. What is yeah. it? What is it about that studio that makes it so special it's for you? It's a studio, and I feel comfortable there. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like home. Yeah. Just yeah. Right. Now, as we said, you've recorded in many different styles. Is there any type of record that uh, you haven't done yet that you'd still like to do? Oh, I don't know. It's some style, perhaps I haven't done. I, I'm getting ready for an album, and I don't know what I'm going to do, but. Whatever I do is going to be done. Well, it's I possibly can do it. How much time do you do you spend touring these days? Well, I I, I don't tour as hard as I used to. I backed off, but I tour enough to keep afloat. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Japan uh, a couple of weeks ago for nine days, and I went to New York for four days, and now I'm back home. Uh, I'll leave here. In a few weeks, and go to Texas for four jobs, and I'll come back home. And next year, I'll go out for about four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have great memories of seeing you down here in in Australia about well, it would have been about twenty years ago now, I think. That's right. Yeah, I remember that night very well. Any any chance we could see you down here again? Yeah, if they if they, if they book me over, there, I'll come. That's all. <laughs> yeah, Just tell the promoters to get it together. We'll do that. Sure, I'll come over there and bring my band. Is is touring still enjoyable for you after all these years? Well, yes, it, it, tour is fun once I get to where I'm going. It's just that I don't like to fly that much. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the performing is, is still enjoyable. It's just the traveling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what about recording plans? Anything um, anything coming up there? Yeah, I'm going to start recording next month, I hope. And what can you tell us about that, that CD? I, don't, I can't tell you anything about it because I don't even know what I'm going to record. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> when I get right on the brink of it, then I start thinking about what I want to do. Is that pretty much how you've done it all, all the time? Yeah, usually, yes. I wait till the last minute and think of what I want to do. Fantastic. Well, we'll look forward to that anyway. Uh, look, thanks so much for your time this morning, Gate. It's been great to uh, to catch up with you. And um, as I said, uh, we've got great memories of seeing you down here back in, in the 80s, and we, we sure hope we can get to see you down here again soon. All right. Look, uh, you have a website there? 